Okay, it is time for Python on Hardware. In space! Yeah, this week, um, this is an epic week. Circuit Python out of this world. <laughs> Max Holiday, it's okay for me to call him Doc Holiday. He said it was cool. He said it was okay. Yeah, um, he came by and talked about all the things that are going on with PyCube, with Kicksat, with all of the satellite work. What does it take to make a microcontroller that goes into space, that's going to work, that's going to be able to get data from space and then send it back to Earth uh, low cost and easy enough for any student to do it. Yeah, and low, yeah, the, the the whole point being low cost. I got him to sign one of the boards. Yeah. And then stuff stuff he, he brought along. He was in town for an IoT event. Uh, Stanford won fifty thousand dollars. Congrats, to Max and team. And he also talked about his work on the SAM thirty two, which is becoming a platform at Stanford for lots of people to use. And also, um, he made this breakout. It was the it's a Laura uh, twelve eighty. Yeah, SEMTECH SX. Yeah, uh, next generation of LoRa chips that can also do some basic uh, time of flight uh, measurement, distance measurement calculations. Who's inter interested in this chip for, again, space calculations? Yeah. Uh, and then so, you did this other cool thing that yeah. was how to, um, you know more about this. Yeah, so this is, if you're looking at this, you're like, hey, that looks sort of like a MEMS accelerometer. It is. They basically made a huge MEMS accelerometer for this MEMS class. So these students are learning about MEMS technology at Stanford. But you know, it's MEMS, it's so small, like you can't see it and you can't really make it. So what they do is they make like 10,000 scale sized accelerometers and yeah. then they actually get them working. So check it out, we have an hour long interview with Lady Ada and Max and also check out Max's introduction to soldering, one of the best soldering guides. Ah, uh, it's great. Look at these beautiful photos, he's yeah. a great photographer. Okay, with the launch of iOS 13, iPhone users now have the ability to edit code on circuit Python USB devices, yay, there's a couple caveats, but we have a blog post about it. And, and we just have a guide that just went live as well with step-by-step -step instructions, so check that out. Uh, we're, as iOS 13 comes out, more apps are gonna be able to edit file systems. We'll probably get better and better support right now. There's a couple extra steps, but hopefully that will simplify soon. Okay, and then CircuitPython 6 is way to FT232H. Yes. This is a Carter guide. He's writing it right now, and I'm helping him with it, and we'll have that live soon. Yeah. Uh, and it's neat because you will be able to communicate with CircuitPython devices and hardware, uh, buttons, LEDs, i squared c SPA, um, over USB directly. So this is actually a program that's running on my Windows computer. Past Us has a video of this. Yes. I'm going to play it. Oh, yeah? Okay, Lady Ada, what is this? Hey, I'm testing out this new pull request by Catter in the CircuitPython info community. Uh, we've got this board, the FT232H, which is an uh, USB to GPIO and i 2 SPI adapter. And for a while, we've been having some Python support for it, which hasn't been so great. People have asked, why don't you have CircuitPython support for it? And I'm like, that's a good idea. And uh, Carter took it upon himself to add that support. And so now we have this FT233H breakout is connected to my Windows 10 computer. And on my Windows 10 computer, I can run um, Python sketches like this one, which uses CircuitPython hardware libraries to connect to this hardware that's attached. So basically this turns any computer into a CircuitPython friendly computer. So let's try it out. First, I'm gonna run the Blinky demo. That's a good test. So it's just doing GPIO blinking on and off. So far, so good. And yeah, this is running in C Python in Windows. Kind of weird. And then I'm going to try a little OLED demo. So I squared C is a little bit slow. I'm gonna try to speed it up. But here you can see as I twist the accelerometer the values on the OLED change. So again, all this over I squared C tethered to my Windows 10 computer. It's working. All right, and Hackspace issue number 23 is out. This is Halloween builds turn to the fun and dark side of making the look at the best crazy creative Halloween builds around. We have a bunch of stuff in this, including on the cover. Those are the uh, eyes that we make. Snake bonnet from yep. Phil B. We also uh, um, have some articles in there um, about CircuitPython. Uh, ben wrote up this one, how to send data with if then this that, uses a Pi portal, and then of course more things that you can use CircuitPython with for costuming or whatever else. And this is Sophie's project. This is a really easy way to make wings. All right. CircuitPython snakes its way to, you guessed it. Oh, sorry. This is uh, Adafruit Feather takes flight with the SparkFun 
uh, Artemis. The and there's, there's feathers or snakes. Yeah, the I reason know. I said this is because uh, someone wants to put a Circuit Python on this board. But yes. This is the feather format on Circuit uh, on uh, SparkFun's Think Plus Artemis. This is the fifth board from SparkFun that uses the feather format, and we might see Circuit Python on there. We shall see. Yeah, this is neat, and you know, it's it's can use your feather wings and stuff. I guess it has Arduino support, so try it out if you have feathers. Uh, yeah. We have a couple dozen feathers out there, feather wings. You should plug them Hundreds. in and get them running. Meet Gizmo. Uh, we wanted to add this. This is uh, a circuit Python accessory for Circuit Playground Express Circuit. I'm going to express blue fruit. Works with the classic, but you should probably stick to the express for these. Yeah, they, these will work with the best of the express because it's a large 240 by 240 inch display. We're going to be doing some more projects with this and the Circuit Playground Blue Fruit, which is fast enough to um, drive this display with a quickness. Usually everything is cooler in Japan, and this uh, this is true with the Circuit Python and MooBook. This is uh, one of the most interesting, coolest books that we've seen. We're going to probably stock it, even though it's Japanese language only. We want to get our hands on these. There was Steam Tokyo. This was an event. This is the new book that's coming out, the artist that was there. Uh, the artist was there, and there's also now t-shirts, of course. That t-shirt's so cool. That is cool. Uh, events are springing up all over. This is Introduction to Circuit Python. Um, this is in Canton, Connecticut. We don't even know about this. We just I had to search for Circuit Python on Twitter, and I'm like, oh, this is cool. So they're now doing classes on Thursdays um, all the way through October. Folks are going to events, and they're using the Pi Badge to make their own name badges. People around the world are getting their... Adafruit Adabox 13s. We said that we'd be full, and we were. So if you got one, congratulations. They're already doing some of the projects. This is some of the projects that work out of the box. You can just put the eyeballs in a mask and more. That's uh, a pretty creepy Halloween yeah, thing. This is getting you put, you pretty, put that on your door. This gets you pretty close to having a great Halloween costume out of the box. Um, other things that we wanted to spotlight. Here's some cool masks. That's a cool mask. Whoa. Yeah. Spectral foxes. That's nice. This is the waveform generator. That, Feather wing. Yep, that Jeff is working on. This is a Circuit Python badge life badge that someone's oh, making nice. on there. Yep. Yep, that's my uh, that's my rectangle test. Here's more cosplaying with the eyeballs, and you can see this one. Um, uses the eyeball split apart. The mask allows mm, you to do that. I like that because you can see through sort of like the nose a little bit, you can, but they still have the eyes. Yep. This is a challenge with masks, but this person did a good job. The latest Amp Hour podcast had Ken Burns of Tiny Circus, and towards the end of the interview, they talk about Circuit Python about one hour, 22 minutes in. This one, you sent this to me, Lady Ada. Jepler was working on this cool Commodore. Yeah. Hack. So what's funny is he like spent all this time on it, and after he's done, he's like, yeah, I got this working. And then he's like, this is totally useless. So what he did is he figured out a way to get the REPL on a circuit Python board to go through the UART. And so that means that you can connect it up to something with a serial input like a Commodore 64. Cool. And you can use the Commodore 64 as the, uh, you run a terminal program on the Commodore 64, and now you can use that as your REPL in out. So you can run Python, circuit Python scripts by typing on your Commodore 64. And then he's like, this is a really old clunky keyboard and this monitor is not that great, but it looks cool. We need to guide up. This is basic TensorFlow object recognition on any computer iOS with Google Colab. Yep. Next up, I thought you might like this uh, chart. So oh I yeah, this chart's cool. There. This is Moore's Law versus actual transistor count. Now what's cool about this, we're gonna let this run a little bit, the the video. My favorite is like the TI Explorer's Lisp chip. I'm like, I don't remember, yeah. I've never heard about that. We're gonna let it run a little bit. I don't wanna go all the way to 2019. You can, you can check this out later. But you can see where the Moore's Law pops up and then a chip comes up and it pushes like, it boom. down. Yeah. And it's like, here we go. So this is the, this is the fifth generation Intel micro uh, controller. And then you see it's like, whoa, whoa Moore's, Law is, Moore's Law is doing great. We're gonna, this is, this is fantastic. Pinky None of these Crow. chips are gonna keep up. But then later on, some of the chips start overtaking. Yes, they start. They come up with a new process, and then it, they, they, especially when they start doing the quad cores or eight core chips and the uh, server chips, that's when it starts. Look at all these. Being very aggressive. Yeah. So we're only up to the year 2000 now. And what's interesting is like the GPUs are coming in. So Nvidia. Yeah. You're seeing that they're not CPUs. They're GPUs. They're the ones that are actually has so many transistors. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah, the itanium. That's when it 
that's when things started. Went We were beating Moore's Law for a while. Yeah. Okay, so check out the thrilling conclusion later. Yeah. <laughs> um, this is a Serpente, and we covered this before, but I wanted to put Arturo's tweet about this. Because why would you put CircuitPython on a board and make it CircuitPython compatible? Well, we could say a lot of things, but he said it best. Next time there's an official release, it would also be built for Serpente and available download from there. Thanks, Adafruit's UF2 bootloader. The update process is super easy. He also did a follow-up, and he's like, when you update, you get all these things for free. It's all the things that CircuitPython does. So yeah, all you have to do, if you have a board that works with the SAMD21, the SAMD51, um, the NR52840, and, and we're starting on the STM32s, uh, you will uh, be able to get your board package in, and then we will automatically make builds for you. This was a coming soon, but uh, we wanted to show that it's the new stuff we're doing with Blue Fruit, Bluetooth, Bluetooth Low Energy, and all the Adafruit stuff. So watch how fast this image goes over to the device. That's fast. Yeah. It takes actually longer to draw it than to transmit it. Yeah. And so we want to do things like you would be able to, you know, take something off your phone and get it to your CircuitPython powered device, and it should be almost instant, um, so you're not waiting forever. And just check this out. That's a really large image, and look how quick it goes. Ooh. This is a 320 by 240. Yeah. yeah, it's quite large. Okay. And next up, uh, this is super this cute Lego minifigs, and this is a Wi-Fi backpack for them. Yeah, he's thinking of maybe redesigning it to add a Wi-Fi. He's like, oh, you know, it would fit here, just like yeah. the the figurine has a backpack. And this is with the new Osh Park After Dark PCBs. You can see, they look really cool. Yeah. And then uh, Scott posted a video about Glider, so we're gonna let Scott uh, Glide away. take it away. So this is wirelessly connecting to the other here. Now we're connected and it should load the code. You can ignore this error. So we've loaded the code.py off of the Feather board here via Bluetooth. And now we can actually tap different parts of the code to change different parts. So if I, <laughs> there we go, <laughs> tap target small. So if I want to change a number, I get a number keyboard. If I want to change text, I can change each individual piece of text. And if I want the keyboard to go away, I can just tap there as well. Next up, a new guide. This is keep your CircuitPython libraries on devices easily updated with CircUp. This is from Intel, and Melissa wrote up the guide. It is now live. Katni was working on the Adafruit Circuit Playground Bluefruit uh, updates to make sure everything works out. Brian Sedacious, was also working on some things. This week he finished up and released the SSD 1305 frame buff driver to use on the upcoming large OLED bonnet. And after that, um, Lady Ada, maybe you could talk about what this is. This, this is, is it's actually an old sensor, the MPU6050, but people still use this chip a lot. So we thought, you know, we've been meaning to make a breakup for it. So we thought we would uh, throw together a stem board for this chip. Yep. Jepler was looking around for DAC issues on the boards with SAMD51 microcontrollers like the M4 Express and did a pull request to improve various problems with the DACs that were used for simple things like analog out or uh, audio out. Microsoft has a giant 40-part series of Intro to Python. Check it out. It's free. It's on YouTube. All month in October is the Open Hardware Month. We You're going to be doing, blogging stuff, right? I'll be doing a post a day. Wow. 30 Talk, posts. Talking about things 31 from, posts. From, from A to Z, from Circuit Python to something that starts with Z. I don't know. Yeah. So uh, ex <laughs> expect to see that and more. And that is the news out of this world this week, Circuit Python Space Explorers. That is the Python on Hardware News this week. To the moon!